welcome back to my channel or if you just happen to stumble across my channel and you're wondering who the heck I am I'm Mand so today's video I had put up a poll on Instagram of course I forgot to take a screenshot but it was about either sleep paralysis or a haunted place in Ireland and it was actually 50 50 and I just wanted to know which one you guys wanted to see first so the haunted place in Ireland won first and as you probably can tell by the title of where I'm doing this this is about a haunted mansion in County Sligo called Lachine House or formerly known as Seafield House so apparently it is haunted by very violent poltergeists but grab a snack or a drink of your choice Settle down and we'll get stuck into the story of Lachine or Seafield House. Lachine House was built in 1840 to 1842 by a man called William Phibbs and he apparently was a very wealthy landlord of English nobility and he built this house solely to show off his power and his wealth. Now where Lachine is built it i think the area is called lachine the full name is lachine kuraban oh gosh i'm gathering it but i'll put it up here and it actually translates into the little white fort on the hill now the area of where lachine is built or lachine house i should say is steeped in ancient magic and spiritual heritage and all that but apparently there is a ancient druid ritual site not too far from the house so i do think that's important to note at the start kind of the location the house was built in a classical design of the two square stories and the front entrance had seven bays and the front door was set behind a two doorway with two large columns now on the first floor there was a gallery which was known as the museum and I'll get into why it was called a museum very soon. You see William Phibbs had a son called Owen Phibbs and he was a archaeologist of type or somebody who just liked to collect antiques and whatnot but he was known to go to ancient Egypt, Syria, the Middle East and he would collect artifacts from there and relics and he would display them in the museum now if the events of this house are to go by these relics were or artifacts were probably better off left alone soon after these relics and artifacts from egypt and the middle east were brought and displayed in the museum it, things at the house got very strange and kind of disturbing as in people who stayed in the house would complain of a draft or just cold air or just odd noises that they couldn't explain and it was also said that a dark figure could be seen on the stairways and shortly after they could hear crashing and just all these loud noises throughout the whole house and the next morning they would find things broken or just out of place and ornaments would be broken and pottery would be broken it was just absolutely mad that these events would happen or happened right after he brought these artifacts from Egypt the gardener even left the place of work because he seen one evening a dark figure running straight towards the ocean cackling and he refused to come back now it is said that on one occasion the house shook so violently that everybody fled the house and they just refused to come back all the workers just refused to come back into this house i just wanted to add an extra little bit about Owen fibs here but see i kind of found this out after as i was doing kind of more and i had the stuff written out but apparently he was a keen collector of egyptian artifacts and he had ancient Egyptian mummies kept inside the museum and people say that he may have been an occultist and may have had links to the Freemasons and other organizations in Ireland but some people believe like that he may have brought back a djinn I think that's how you pronounce up the spelling here to the place and that is what's haunting 
the Sheen house. I'm not really sure, but apparently most of this, no, all of this happened because of the artifacts and the mummies that he brought back from Egypt. The house had such a bad reputation then from all this paranormal activity, poltergeist, gins, that it ended up changing the name from Seafield House to Lachine House in the hopes that it would conceal the stories and the you know the reputation that this house had. But in the 1900s, it was handed over to Jesuit priests, Jesuit priests, hoping I'm saying that right, but in the hopes that they could exercise the house to get rid of whatever was attached to this place. And they said mass daily to see could they drive out what was ever causing all this activity but they ended up actually fleeing and never returned either. Other tales tell of William Phibbs having a really bad reputation as a landlord and he would treat his tenants really cruelly to keep him in the style he was accustomed to. He would charge high rents and kick out tenants who couldn't pay the rent and he would take the stones off their houses, their homes, to put on the walls of his fields and he'd also make them salute him as he was passing in his very fancy carriage. So other tales tell that he really wasn't a nice landlord. Now there is a story that William Phibbs evicted a widow woman who cast a dreadful spell on the Phibbs family, swearing that the day would come when the birds would build their nests in the ruin of Seafield House and that the Phibbs family would forever walk the halls of a house in this life or the next forever basically she condemned him to be stuck to this house forever and the strange thing is the only inhabitants and inheritors of Lachine house are the magpies and crows they're the only ones that live there now because all that's left of it is the exterior walls it's completely taken over by trees and vines and there's really even the roof was gone I think they actually removed that but apparently on certain nights you can hear a carriage and four horses pull up to the house and vanish soon after the reputation of this house is known worldwide uh, it's very popular with ghost hunters clearly it's quite a paranormal activity but what they have caught um, is phenomenal they have said they've caught lights far off in the distance where the Druid ritual sites are. Some people have said that the bricks have fallen down while they have visited the location. Now it's not an easy place to get to, but even the graffiti, I've seen a couple of videos, I'll link them down below, said the graffiti really is creepy. It, it adds to kind of the ambience of the house. So guys, that is the end of my video. What do you guys think? Do you think it is a poltergeist? Do you think it's connected to the Egyptian mummies that old Fibs brought back? Do you think it was a djinn that he brought back that haunts this house? Or is it possible, because it is called the Little White Fort on the hill, that it's to do with fairies or even the Druid ritual site? The, the endless possibilities of what this could be is fascinating but the fact that the house is totally collapsed in itself even from the research I did people were surprised at how quick this house like dis disintegrated collapsed because it's not that old of a house I mean it's not thousands it's not a castle you know where they're like hundreds and hundreds of years old this was built in 1840 which is some time ago but it's not as old as castles some of the castles in ireland would be so what do you think what do you think it is or is it just some folklore that the locals tell people who visit just to scare them comment below what you think i'd love to hear what you think it is so guys if you like this video please give it a huge thumbs up i'd really appreciate it and i hope you don't mind me rambling <laughs> apologies i'm trying to get better at that 
Of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when I upload. I'm aiming for one video a week now because life is just hectic. <laughs> so I hope you have an amazing day wherever you are in the world and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye. Thank you.